Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ahmed Hifni and in this video I will show you how to fully be ready to use Penit Lab to be your first choice when emulating large and complex labs instead of packet tracer. Most of us as network people know, who are already uh, familiar with packet tracer software. Packet Tracer is a product of Cisco that allow you to build labs and add switches and routers to practice what you are learning during the CCNA training journey. But unfortunately, Packet Tracer is a simulator software. What does it mean when I'm saying Packet Tracer is simulator? That Packet Tracer is not a real router or a real switch. The device that you are adding to Packet Tracer is not a real network device, rather than it. It is a software that is programmed to interact in a specific way as it was programmed, which means the configuration you are doing on router, on switches, on packet tracer should not necessarily be the same way or the same capabilities that you could do in a real network device. The boot time, the loading, the, the way that you are interacting, it is based on simulation scenarios. In, on the other hand, the packet tracer provide a very simple utility to learn and to start your career journey or start your learning journey on. But as your knowledge grow and as your experience uh, grow, you will try, you will be strive for a more holistic solution or a more uh, advanced way to emulate large labs. Like you, you might need to insert uh, different kind of devices. Uh, like fireballs or Windows Server machines to simulate uh, like if you are working in a big enterprise and make and want to make a network that emulate uh, what a big, the big enterprise looks like. So in this case you will need an emulator and you will hear a lot about GNS3 which was the first or one of the first or early stage emulators that appeared like 10 or, tw or 12 years ago it was based on a software called Dynamips. And Dynamips, Dynamips software, in fact, was taking the real iOS image, the real software image of Cisco, and try to run it on your uh, computer, on Intel-based processors, using the Dynam Dynamips software. So the, the GNS3 took the core or the core binaries of Dynamips and built uh, their very first emulation software on Windows uh, that allowed you to uh, interact with, with Dynamics in uh, a GUI way. After GNS3, we uh, had a lot of uh, alternative like uh, Unit Lab, like EVNG and BNet. And in this video, we are talking about BNet Lab because it is the most recent emulation software and it is the most software that have uh, that has a lot of capabilities and a lot of devices that you can add in uh, and uh, the simplicity that I will show you in our video. So uh, expect that 99.9999% uh, uh, of the behavior of the devices that you will encounter with emulation software will be much similar to the behavior that you might encounter with real world network devices which means it, it became unnecessarily to uh, study on uh, physical hardware like purchasing old router or, or, or the switch to practice labs. It, 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 is no more, no, uh, it is no more needed. All what you have to do is download uh, the Bennett Lab image, uh, install or uh, get uh, the related uh, software images and build a lab in a way that mm, uh, a lo uh, very efficient rather than building a hardware-based rack. However, the need for hardware may exist for people who are interested in applying labs related to wireless technology or VoIP, like voice over IP guys, who are working on call manager and physical IP phones. Uh, but for the most most of people that are interested in security field or in network routing and switching or service provider environment, the Bennett Lab will amaze you and will give you a lot of capabilities that would allow you to escalate and grow your level and grow your knowledge. 
So uh, we will use uh, emulator that is called BinitLab, and in this video, we will dive in BinitLab installation. We will know more about the prerequisites, how to build your first lab, and most importantly, how to download labs from BinitLab and download the respective images in a very easy way. I can see uh, when I Google or search on YouTube, I can see a lot of videos that discussing how to uh, download iOS images or uh, VIOS images using uh, file FTP, using FileZilla, and so on. But in this video, I promise you that I will show you a very, very simple way to uh, download whatever images that you want to download, starting from, from the basic iOS images to uh, Windows Server uh, machines and iOS software for, the, for all people who are interested in the security field. So uh, without much talking, uh, if, if you are interested, please complete uh, this video with us and we hope it will be informative and will be useful and will uh, add to your knowledge. So what do we need? We need a computer, of course, and this computer should have an Intel uh, X64 or X64 processor, uh, no matter if, if it was AMD, but most importantly, it should support the virtualization technology. The virtualization technology should be supported on most of modern processors, and this technology allow you to install OS over OS, which means you might have a Windows machine, and then you uh, decide to test a Linux machine, or, or, or you want to test Linux software or Linux operating system. So uh, you enable uh, the virtualization technology in your computer BIOS, and download a hypervisor software such as VMware Workstation or VirtualBox, and then uh, install the Linux image and test uh, OS inside the existing OS without the need for formatting your computer or adding external or additional hard drive to install the new uh, OS on it. So uh, the virtualization technology is essential and should be enabled for your computer BIOS. If you have uh, x64 processor and you know it is it supports the virtualization technology, just uh, get uh, the model of your motherboard and Google or search on YouTube how to enable the virtualization technology on the BIOS or in the BIOS of this motherboard. You need a uh, free space to install uh, the virtualization software as well as the Bennett Lab image. I recommend uh, not, not less than 15, 15 gigabyte, but you should have a lot of storage if you need to download a lot of images or download uh, machines such as Windows Server machines inside Bennett Lab. Also, you need at least 8 gigabyte of memory, but personally, I recommend to have at least 16 gigabyte up to 32 gigabyte because as long as you're adding more devices there these devices will will eat the memory and will consume the memory so you need a lot of memory in fact 16 gigabyte will do but if you have eight gigabytes only it will do also it will not say anything but you will create a small labs you need of course a hypervisor software you have two alternative you have either to download and purchase and install VMware Workstation or VirtualBox, which is a free software. So uh, be aware that Workstation is uh, uh, a commercial software. You need a license. And VirtualBox uh, Workstation is a commercial software, uh, unlike VirtualBox, which, which is totally free. I know that uh, VMware also have a software called uh, VMware, VMware Player. But uh, in case you uh, don't have workstation, I encourage you to download and install VMware, uh, Oracle VirtualBox. And don't worry, in this video, I will show you how to download the VirtualBox and how to install Bennett Lab based on VirtualBox, not VMware Workstation. And of course, the same rules applies in uh, both uh, softwares. So after then, you uh, need, uh, as we said, hypervisor allow you to run OS inside OS. It's very amazing and will help you a lot if you want to practice and want to install Windows Server machine, for example, or Linux uh, like Kali Linux and want to practice labs in closed environment. The hypervisor is a must for anybody who are interested in a job in IT because it allow you to it will allow you to practice and emulate real world example. 
uh, you need to watch this video till the end. Uh, hopefully, I, I hope you, if you can do this, because uh, every minute in in, the, in our in my videos, I give information, and when you uh, apply what I'm saying exactly the same way, I guarantee you, you will be a master in Penetlab. So uh, the first thing we are going to do is to download the Minitlab image from the URL shown in the screen. Uh, if you uh, don't want to uh, write down the URL, we will show you I or I will show you the exact steps to download the Minitlab image. You need to open Google search and uh, you can say uh, or can type Minitlab uh, download. You will look for the first result in uh, search re result, which is from benetlab.com website. You will hit uh, on the link. Then uh, you will uh, download the image from uh, one of these three links. The image size is uh, about two gigabyte, uh, two gigabytes, so it will take time according or depending on the bandwidth that you are uh, currently have. So uh, I will leave uh, the image downloading and I will show you how to get virtualization software such as VirtualBox. So in my case, I will use VMware Workstation to illustrate uh, th uh, this process. As you can see here, I have Windows 11 installed on my Windows 10 machine. I, I make this happen by installing uh, VMware Workstation and on top of VMware Workstation, after enabling the virtualization technology on my uh, device, I uh, installed a Windows 11 machine and now I, am, I have the uh, desktop of Windows 11. So in Windows 11 machine, I will open the web browser so uh, in the browser, I will open Google. And then I will type virtual box download or, or to be exact or, or uh, in order to be specific, I will type Oracle virtual box download the way that I will do right now. Oracle virtual box download. So uh, the first result uh, in Google search, I will open it. It, it say it's called download Oracle Box VM, and this URL is from Oracle website. So depending on your operating system machine, in my case, I am using Windows uh, operating system. So I will choose the image for Windows. Uh, once I click on it, it will start the downloading of uh, the virtual box image. Now I started to download the virtual box image. So assuming that I already have downloaded this image before. So now I have on my desktop the virtual box binary uh, software. In order to install it, it's a very simple steps. All what you have to do is to run this installation file and hit next, 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 except on anything that you may encounter during the installation process. So it's a, it is a very a simple way uh, for installation. It won't it won't be a problem for anybody who who will try to install it. But the most important thing in order to make things happen correctly, you have to enable the virtualization technology from the BIOS as we uh, mentioned earlier. If you don't know how to uh, enable the virtualization technology in your uh, device, just uh, you need to uh, know what the version or, or what is the model of your motherboard. So uh, now it, it is prompting me to install a device. So I will click install. And that's it. It, it should uh, now, uh, I should now have VirtualBox installed on my machine. Uh, if I need to install any operating system, all what I have to do is to open the icon of VirtualBox, but I will, I will uh, okay. wait uh, now the installation is officially finished and the software is currently installed on my Windows 11 machine. In case I want to run the Oracle VirtualBox, uh, just double click on Oracle VirtualBox icon and this is the regular image of VirtualBox uh, once installed. So uh, what, what we need to do right now is uh, we need to import the uh, Bennett Lab image 
which, uh, which we were uh, downloading. So uh, the role of Windows 11 machine is finished uh, till this moment because I used it to illustrate how to download the, uh, how, how to download and install the virtual box software. So I will minimize the operating system of uh, uh, Windows 11 and will open a virtual box from my local computer. And uh, after opening the uh, virtual box software from my local computer, I will click on uh, import. And then I will choose the image uh, which I just downloaded, the Bennett Lab image. And once I choose the image, I will click next. Then I will choose the criteria or the specifications that I need to grant for this device. So as for the CPU, I will leave it as it is, four cores of CPU, eight gigabyte of RAM. You might increase it if you want, but this is the minimum, or let's say this is the recommended size of RAM that will allow you to run Bennett Lab in, in very uh, seamless way. And you may need to leave uh, everything as it is, uh, but last thing that you may need to, to choose is the location of the installation or, or the location of the virtual uh, uh, Bennett Lab image. So I will choose a, a proper location on my uh, computer that uh, I know that it includes a free space. So I will choose a D drive and I will add it in a folder called Bennett. Then I will click import and I will wait till the import process got completed. So it might take a few minutes. So uh, the import process should be completed by now. Now I can power on the machine. So uh, I, will, uh, I will make sure that I am standing on the machine. I can uh, click on settings and give it a name in order to make it unique. So I will call it Bennett Lab uh, video. Then I will click start on top of the page. Now the Bennett Lab image should start uh, and it should uh, start the processing. So I will wait. It now opened in uh, additional or in a different window. So it will start and it should take uh, like one to two minutes in order to fully power on. So uh, the image or the machine is now loading like um, any operating system load. It is now uh, starting. So uh, in case you uh, clicked on uh, inside this window, the mouse will uh, remain inside this window. In order to release the mouse to, uh, to be able to use it in your normal operating system, all what you have to do is uh, to click on uh, right control, the right control button on your keyboard. You need to click on it. And by the way, you uh, you can also find uh, in in the bottom of uh, the uh, Bennett Lab image or uh, or the window of the Bennett Lab uh, virtual machine. We will call it a virtual machine because it is exactly a virtual machine. You have uh, the symbol of right control, which means whatever whenever you uh, your mouse is captured inside this window, all what you have to do is click on uh, right control. So I will uh, remove uh, this uh, notification window and now I can see that Bennett Lab image is uh, operating using uh, IP address 192.168.1.1.0.3 and the uh, default username is root and the password is Bennett. So I will uh, insert the mouse inside uh, the virtual machine window and I will click enter as, as then I will add or create or enter the default username which is root as it as it is written on the screen then I will uh, type the password which is pnet small now I have access to the machine and when you log into this machine for the first time, it will take you to a quick setup uh, menu. It, it, it is now asking me to uh, change the root password. I will uh, keep it as it is. So I will type it as a Bennett once again. Then I will need to repeat it on a, one more time. It's now asking me to specify the domain name. I will leave it as it is. And it is asking me if I want to uh, use static IP address or DHCP IP address. By the way, the Bennett Lab is bridged to my network, which means if anyone uh, inside my network tried to open the IP address, which, has, which I mentioned earlier, will be able to uh, access uh, this virtual machine web interface. 
uh, as long as the firewall of my device is uh, allowing uh, such connection. So I, I personally prefer to keep it as a DHCP IP address in order to uh, change uh, as long as I'm moving from uh, one network to another. So I will leave the option of IP address to DHCP as it is. And then it, it is asking me to uh, provide an NTP server address. I will leave it as it is also. And I will choose that I have direct internet connection. And then uh, it should be fine. The virtual machine will restart and uh, we will wait till it powered up again. So in order to release our mouse from the window of virtual machine, remember to press uh, right control button. So our machine is finally uh, powered up and we have now uh, the option to log in again. So I will provide the username root and the password is Bennett. Now I have uh, terminal access to this machine. In order to start using the software, what you have to do is to open your web browser. Uh, no matter what what is this web browser, any web browser will do. So I will use uh, Fire, Firefox. And uh, if you missed the, to get what was IP address, what you have to do is in, on the virtual machine, either uh, from uh, the login page, you will find the IP address written on top of uh, the page. It is 192.168.1103. Or you can log into the machine itself and type fconfig command. Then add a pipe icon, then uh, type more. And typically, the IP address that you could use to enter the machine or manage the machine is associated with Bennett uh, Zero interface, which is 192.168.1.103. So I will uh, type this IP address in my browser, HTTP 192.168.1.103. Oops, 102, 103. So uh, I wrote the IP address. It is now asking me to specify which uh, way, uh, whether I want to work with online mode or offline mode for lab environment and for typical usage. I recommend to use the offline mode. So the offline mode will do, and we will continue our illustration on the offline mode. I need to create username and password. But by the way, you have uh, a default username and password, which is rule, uh, which is admin, and password is pin it. So for the CLI access uh, username was root, but for the GUI access or the graphical user interface, the password is admin and uh, the user is admin and password is Bennett. And, need, and then you need to add uh, the cabbage uh, written on the screen below, then hit login. I will choose to save the password. And now you have access or have uh, the image or, or or now you are on the graphical user interface or the typical interface of Bennett Lab. So uh, in order to create a new lab, what you need to do is create on a new lab, add new lab icon and give this lab a name. So I will call it this lab. Then I will create add. Of course, you have many options in Bennett Lab because this software have uh, has a lot of capabilities that can uh, support test centers or academ academies that uh, want to deliver cybersecurity or network related courses. So uh, we have a lot of capability when creating a lab, like uh, giving permission to users uh, who, who, of, uh, who, who of users uh, is eligible to edit or uh, modify this lab. But what I'm showing here is the typical usage that uh, you as a normal person that are trying to learn will need. So uh, now I have the lab in order to add devices, I need to uh, go to the left side of the screen and click on adding an object, then adding a nodes. But unfortunately, uh, the Bennett lab default image does not have any nodes uh, except Docker IO image and virtual PC. So I still don't have router, don't have switches, don't have anything. So what I need to do is to download images and how to do so. It is not using the uh, regular way uh, that many people do using uh, FTP and downloading images from internet. What will what I will show you now is a simple trick that will allow you to get to get whatever images you want in a very fast way. What you need to do this this time is to open uh, SSH client of your machine. In my case, I will use Putty client. 
So in PuTTY, I will type the IP address of VinitLab image, and I will specify that I need to connect via port uh, 22 on SSH protocols, and I will it to open. It will give me now a security warning that the certificate uh, is unknown to my local device. So I will trust this certificate. Then it will ask me to provide the username and password. So as we said earlier, the Bennett Lab uh, virtual machine, the console access is uh, username is root and password, as we said before, is pnet. So I don't know if uh, the image or uh, the screen is large enough. So I will try to uh, make uh, things, long, uh, things on the screen or text on the screen uh, looks uh, larger in order to uh, make it visible to you from your side. So I choose now uh, a larger text size. I hope uh, it will do. Uh, what I need to do now is uh, to verify that from my Bennett Lab machine that I have internet connectivity. So I will try to ping 8.8.8.8 and I got replies. So uh, I, uh, I have internet connectivity. Then I will do uh, a command called I share. I share uh, the word I as a letter I, then the word share. Then I will search, type search. And then I will say whatever image that I want to download. So if you are trying to download a chemo image that run Windows machine, you can type uh, the word or the keyword win. So uh, when you hit enter, it will go and search via the iShare application. And now you have options to download all these images. Each image is running a specific software with a specific feature. You have Windows 7 image. You have Windows 7 X, X, X86 image, you have Windows XB, you have Windows Server 2008, 2012, 2016. You have a lot of images when it comes to Windows. So in order to download any image from this, you need uh, first to verify that you have free storage in the location where the virtual machine is installed. The location which we choose, uh, which, which we have chosen uh, early, earlier in this video because if every image have, uh, has a specific storage requirement. For example, this image requires seven gigabyte of storage. This image requires one gigabyte of storage. For typical usage, I recommend to use a Windows 7 Lite machine. Uh, it is three gigabyte of storage and it will do and will support us in our mission. Uh, in case you need to download uh, any operating system, any other operating system like Palo Alto Firewall, you need also to type I share search Palo Alto, but and you will see all OSs or all images related to Palo Alto that you can download and the size of each image depending on the need or as a requirement you are uh, needed. Uh, or the requirement for the lab needed, you may need to uh, build a holistic or complete lab that is based on Palo Alto, Fortinet, Windows uh, technology, as well as Cisco. So uh, it is a matter of concern about Cisco. So we'll, I will show you how to get Cisco images. I will, I will type I share, search, and then I will type uh, a keyword like uh, layer two. Now I have a lot of images that are all looks like iOS images from Cisco. So I will choose any image of, the, of these images, but I personally recommend to search by the year. Uh, so instead of typing uh, uh, L2, I will type 2019. Uh, 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 in order to get the latest images that uh, published in during uh, the 2019. So I will choose this first image. It is size is 100 and, uh, 120 megabytes of memory. So uh, in order to download this image, I will type I share, uh, but this time I will write Paul and then I will uh, paste the name of the image. I, first, I, I highlighted the name of the image uh, and in POTI software and similar terminal application, when you highlight any text, it auto uh, copy it in the clipboard. So uh, now I will hit enter. And then uh, the iShare application will uh, get the file for me. It will download it. But uh, what we can see here is that we have an error or we have a problem. 
So I will try to download the image once again to, to try to overcome the problem. But in case the problem happened again, I will search for another image to download. So it, it is not necessarily that I need to download this image. So I will choose another image. So I will choose this image. It is exactly the same date, uh, but the size of the image is uh, a bit uh, larger. So I will hit I share goals in the image name and hopefully hopefully it will start downloading. So as you can see here, the download progress started now. I am downloading like five megabytes. So we will wait till the download complete to see what the next step that we are going to do. So uh, now the download uh, completed and as you can see here, the download progress or the download size was 120 megabytes unlike what was written on the screen, which was 20, megabyte. So uh, it might mean that the size of the image after uh, installation, uh, it, it will be uh, decompressed to these paths. And after decompression, the total size of the image will be 200 megabytes. So uh, now I can navigate again, once again, to my web browser and try to add an object and add a new node. Now I will have a new option. No, I still don't have any additional option so i will refresh the lab screen and now after refreshing the lab screen when i try to add a new node now i have a new option that i can add cisco ios uh, and ios l2 so i will choose ios l2 but unfortunately in the image field i have the keyword invalid which means this is not was the right option so i will select the iol without l2 now I have the name of the image that I just downloaded. I can here optimize the amount of memory, but it is recommended to keep the memory as it is. So uh, once I click save, and I will try to add additional uh, device from the same model. But as you can see here, the device that I'm using or downloading is layer two device. I, I knew that from the keyword in the binary uh, file image. So I can choose another logo for this device uh, that uh, make it look like a switch. So I will choose uh, a symbol that uh, uh, look, look like a switch for my device. So I have an option in, uh, in Bennett Lab to choose, uh, to choose between a lot of logos. But uh, in each page, I have uh, like uh, uh, 25 logos, so I can uh, navigate from page to another uh, till I find uh, the good example or a good lo logo that uh, will uh, suffice my needs. So I found this logo and it looked interesting and looked like a switch. So I will hit OK, then I click Select and we'll call this device a switch and then click Save. So now I have two devices in my Bennett Lab device. I may uh, click on this device as well and choose uh, iOS image or uh, choose the thumbnail that look like a switch the way I did on the, with the first device. Then I will call it Switch also. Then I will hit, I will hit Save. Now I have two devices. I can press on this icon in order to uh, get a connection between the two devices. So when I click on it and uh, drag it to the next device, I will have uh, a new screen that telling me that which interfaces on both devices that you need to uh, attach this cable to. So I will choose Ethernet 00 and Ethernet 00 on both devices and I click save. And by the way, you cannot add links on Bennett Lab devices without powering off it first. So you need, uh, the devices need to be powered off before adding devices because as we said, it is like an emulator software. So it, it is not working the same way as that packet tracer do. Then I will uh, select uh, both devices uh, by the, uh, the, right click, uh, the left click of the mouse. Then I will click on start selected devices. After clicking on uh, this option, the devices should now be powered on. And when I click on uh, any one of these devices, it will ask me to
to uh, choose an application to open the device's terminal. So, I, so I, in my case, I will use secure CRT application, but in your case, you might choose an application. You might not have secure CRT, so I will choose a PuTTY application. So I will navigate to where is the location of PuTTY on my machine. So in my machine, the PuTTY application is existing in, in this uh, URL or in this path, so I will choose PuTTY icon. Then I will select always use PuTTY application to open uh, this type of files in case you don't have a uh, secure CRT application. Then I will hit open the link. Now when I, I hit enter, I have now a fully operational switch that uh, is running on Bennett Lab. When I hit show CDB neighbor, I will find that my, the first switch can sense the second switch using the CDB protocol. However, there is a, a point that I need to highlight that in some cases, when you install the Bennett Lab image, it won't, uh, when you add a new switch, uh, whenever you power, try to power this switch up, it won't power up, it, power, it powered on, and then it immediately powered off. The reason why for this is that in some installation cases, when uh, installing the Bennett, Bennett Lab image, whether on uh, VMware Orchestration on, or uh, on uh, VirtualBox, uh, which is the software you are using right now, in some cases, when you open the settings of the virtual machine, uh, under the system uh, menu, under the processor, you can find that in nested uh, VT, uh, VT option is not enabled. So in order to enable uh, the nested VT option and allow, it, allow everything to work smoothly, you may find uh, this option dimmed in your device and you will not be able to click on it to allow the nested virtual machines to run. Uh, so in order to allow this machine to run or to uh, uh, click on this option and make it uh, clicked, what you need to do is open your CMD from your Windows device and then go uh, CD to program files, then CD to Oracle folder, then another CD to VirtualBox folder, and uh, last but not least, what you need to do is to uh, run uh, the script that I will show you on the screen. This specific script need to be run and you need, you need to replace the word your virtual box name to the name of the virtual machine that running the Bennett Lab image. So in our case, uh, this image is called uh, Bennett Lab video. So uh, what I need to do right now is to uh, exit uh, the PowerPoint uh, presentation, and here I need to type Bennett Lab uh, video. Then I will get uh, this text uh, using the copy, and then I will add it again. It will tell me that Bennett Lab is already running, so what I need to do now is to switch off the image before running this script. But remember, the things on the, in our lab worked smoothly. We were able to run the virtual switch, and everything is working fine. But in case you encountered an issue with Bennett Lab, that uh, Bennett Lab is uh, machines is uh, started and immediately get stopped uh, immediately, what you need to do is to follow the steps that we will illustrate right now. So I need to uh, close the machine. So I need to uh, shut down the machine use it by selecting the machine option uh, from the toolbar of the virtual machine and click on ECBI shutdown. Now the machine is shutting. So after machine became down, now I can uh, retype the command that I just wrote. Uh, I will type here VBOX modify VM Bennett Lab video nested hardware vert on. The same way, exactly the same way that I am showing you in the screen. And remember to use change directory command to go inside the virtual box software inside uh, installation path. I'm not speaking here about the path of the virtual machine. I'm speaking about the path of the virtual box software installation. So I will click enter. Now, when I try to open uh, the virtual machine once again, and when I click on the settings to show the settings of this machine and go to system processor, I will have the two options are uh, clickable, or let's say the two options are enabled. So now I can uh, reopen the machine safely now, but remember that in our case, 
we didn't got any issue. So uh, while this machine uh, is starting, I will go and show you how to do uh, or import the machine on VMware Orchestration. So in my lab or, or in my device, I already have a uh, software of VMware Orchestration installed. I will show you uh, the uh, this is uh, uh, VMware Workstation software on my device. So what I need to do in order to make uh, Bennett Lab working, I need to uh, import the machine by clicking on File, then click Open, then select the path or the folder where the, where the Bennett Lab image was downloaded. So I will click, right, uh, double click on the uh, virtual machine image and it, it will get imported in the VMware Workstation. After importing the image, what you need to do is to click on the image. In my case, I will click on the Bennett Lab image here. And then I will select Edit Virtual Machine Settings. And make sure under Processor Options that you have the two uh, options of Virtualize and Virtualize CPU Performance Counter to be enabled by clicking on both of them, then hit OK. So whenever you run this machine, you will it will behave, behave the same way we show uh, or we saw in uh, our uh, example with VirtualBox. So now uh, I should have the Bennett Lab machine uh, running uh, again, and I will try to uh, click open the URL again. Now I have my lab, then I will select both, both devices and I, I will click start. And I will wait a little till the machines uh, or the two switches uh, became up and running. So the first switch came up, but the second switch is still, so I will uh, manually start it. And I will wait a little uh, till both switches became up and running. Another interesting feature in uh, Bennett Lab is that you can customize the icon of each device. So assuming that you need uh, your lab to look uh, more realistic and look like uh, uh, more better, you may uh, decide to get uh, an image of a real Cisco switch. In my case, I will look for uh, a real image for uh, 680 uh, switch icon in BNG format. So I will choose the search by images. And now I have found this image, but it looked like uh, it, it looked uh, not good. I will choose this image and will search for a relevant image or similar images. And now I can see that, that this image is perfect for my needs. So I will open the snipping tool on my windows and will, will select this image. Then I will hit copy, select copy. Then you can open any photo editor software like Paint.net, for example. For in my case, I will use uh, Paint.net, which is a perfect software to do what I need to do right now. So in Paint.net software, I will paste the image that I just downloaded, or I will open a new image and will paste the image that, uh, that I was copying in the clipboard. Then I will hit image, resize, and will resize the image to 60 pixel. And I will click on the maintaining of aspect ratio. So now I did a resize for the switch. I can make it bigger if I need, because it is a core switch. So I will try to make it uh, a little bit bigger. So I will resize this image to me uh, 100 pixel. Unfortunately, because of the resizing, the, big, uh, the picture be became uh, not very clear. So I will try to uh, hit control and, uh, and choose the original image and will open. Sorry for the interruption. So the application is freezing. So. No problem, I will close uh, this application and will start it again. So I will select that I need to open a new image and I will paste the clipboard. 
then I will select the option to resize the image and I will give, give it like 200 pixel. Then I will choose to save this file in any location. So I will call it VSS. Then I will hit OK. Now I did a quick resize for the image. Now I can go again to the Bennett Lab uh, uh, graphical user interface and I can click right click on any switch of uh, these switches and click edit and choose uh, to upload a new icon. So I will hit upload and then we'll look for the file that I just did a uh, resize for it. So uh, this file. Then I will uh, look, uh, look for this file by clicking on uh, the arrow, arrow icon. And as you can see here, the file is imported and the image in, is imported in the list of Bennett Lab icons. So I will choose it and will click select. But it didn't change it yet, so I will repeat the steps. I selected now the VSS, then I will click select, not close. I believe this was the problem, then I will, I will click save. Now, as you can see here, you have a, a, a similar to uh, what you can see in production environment, a switch uh, that uh, a real uh, logo of the switch replacing the default logo of uh, the Bennett Lab switches. So it will be uh, more relevant for you while studying and it will, it will make your lab look perfect and will, can make your lab look uh, much like a production or uh, a real uh, work environment. So uh, as we can see, uh, whenever I click on the device, I choose uh, uh, SSH software and now I have uh, full CLI access to a uh, switch that give me better capabilities than uh, what was Bucket Tracer was uh, doing. You can do a lot of things using uh, this software image. You can do DHCP snooping labs, IP source guard labs, board security labs. You can attach Windows machines to the switch. You can attach servers and leave it to your imagination. You can do anything with Bennett Lab. We, can, we have an interesting option also in Bennett Lab that I need to, uh, now I need to uh, tw switch to the HTML console. When you switch to the HTML console, you uh, will have uh, the option to open the CLI to the switch inside the, uh, inside the same page which means you will never need uh, putty software or secure CRT, CRT software to log into your machines once again. You will have uh, a built-in uh, SSH client that is based on a software called uh, Jomakala, and this software will allow you to SSH to devices and make things more arranged and everything will appear in the same screen. So as you can see here, we have uh, the CLI to the switch and we have the option to uh, do multi-tabbing, uh, which means you will have a single screen that will get all of your switches. Uh, this option, uh, personally, I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't like it a lot, but it will uh, give you great capabilities when you decide to run Wireshark in Bennett Lab. When you decide to run Wireshark in Bennett Lab, you can click here and click capture and click that you need to capture the traffic on interface Ethernet 0 slash 0. So when you click on this, you will have uh, the special screen, but unfortunately you don't have Wireshark installed on Bennett Lab. In order to get Wireshark on Bennett Lab and allow it to work on HTML file screen, you need to uh, go back again or go back to the main page of Bennett Lab, you need to select that you need to close the lab. It will not destroy or shut down the lab. It will just close the lab. So you will close the lab. And you can go to uh, the devices icon. And in device icon, you will see a lot of devices that are free uh, for use and doesn't have copyright problems like uh, Ubuntu server, like Google Chrome, like Wireshark, and it is all based on Docker technology. So you will select Wireshark, for example. So I will click on Get Device and it will start to download the binary files of Wireshark and install the Docker machine on my Bennett Lab device. So after some time, you will notice that the download activity is stopped on this screen. So you can close uh, this page. 
So after download has been completed, you can return to the lab by clicking on run la running lab icon. And then you can open the lab by clicking on open icon here. So when you try to repeat the same steps by uh, pointing your mouse on one of the devices and select the capture options and select the interface that, that you are want to capture, you will have uh, the Jumakella screen opening and the Wireshark application should start to work. If it didn't start it for any reason, you can choose to uh, reconnect because based on my experience, I find uh, Jumakella software is like annoying that it gave me a lot of reconnecting messages. So I will collect, uh, I will select it few times and hopefully it, it's finally working. And now I have a Wireshark application running inside the same page of the Bennett lab. So I can use Wireshark to, for example, uh, look for specific traffic types, dive in packet and uh, understand the behavior of the frame or packets inside the network. Uh, the way that I could do if I am running a real life uh, example to troubleshoot. You can use Bennett Lab and this solution or this simulation to simulate business cases, test before applying on production, and gain more information and, go and gain a lot of knowledge based on trial and error. So uh, that was it for uh, this video. The last point that I want to mention, I know this video uh, is almost 15 minutes. I hope it is not boring and uh, it gave you a lot of information. The last thing I want to mention, which, which is one of the core competencies with Bennett, uh, of Bennett Lab software, is the ability to, to download so, uh, labs uh, made by people like you and me from across the globe to download it and follow lab instructions to uh, solve uh, issues or understand or learn how to configure specific features. In order to download labs from Bennett Lab, what you need to do is to go to uh, the home screen once again. So as we agreed before, we can close the lab from this uh, by this option and uh, select the download lab feature. Of course, you should have internet connectivity in order to download labs. And then it will direct you to the store of Bennett Lab. As you can see here, we have massive numbers of labs that cover wide spectrum of technologies and wide spectrum of topics in CCIE level up to CCIE level. Uh, but in our case, we are looking for CCNA labs. We have CCNA labs here. And also we have uh, CCNA security, SD1, MBLS labs, and so on. So whatever the technology you are learning right now, it is prob probably you will find a related lab on Bennett Lab Store. So I will select the Bnet uh, CCNA topics because it will because it will be relevant to a lot of people. So and then I will choose any lab from the labs listed on the screen. So I will choose the this lab which is uh, speaking about the net technology and i will read the description of the net and then i will click download lab the lab size should be uh, less than a uh, few megabytes so it will not take long to download uh, then after downloading the lab it will inform me that lab is successfully downloaded so then i will click to go to lab and now i will open the new lab here and i will select the lab file then i will hit open as you can see here the creator of this lab uh, did a lot of good work he he adds switches uh, servers and routers and uh, like internet connection uh, option and so on so uh, he did a lot of fantastic work uh, what we need to do in order to follow this lab is to click on the uh, box uh, in the left side of the screen for in my case it is in the left i will click on this option and i will have like a text written i can follow this text in order to apply uh, it uh, on uh, the devices that I'm working on and it will give me a lot of information like the first task is configuring static net so it will show you the importance of net, uh, of net and then it will tell you specifically on router 1 what configuration you need to do on router 2 what configuration you need to do and so on 
So it will be a great opportunity to learn and uh, uh, apply a lot of technologies and apply a lot of skills and harden your skills using uh, by using Minit Lab to learn about technologies. The last thing I want to say about the labs downloaded from Bennett Lab is that every device in each lab should ideally have an iOS image. But as you can see here, the iOS image associated with R1 device is highlighted by keyword invalid before the iOS image because this iOS image is not existing on your installation of Bennett Lab. So what you can do in order to download this image and make your lab functioning that before running any device in this lab, you need to uh, take this name. So I will try to uh, look for this name or look for this image using the iShare software, which we will use earlier in order to download iOS images. So I will restart my session with uh, the, uh, the uh, Bennett Lab virtual machine and I will type the password. I believe it was Bennett. Now I have uh, an access to uh, the Bennett Lab virtual machine again. So I will use the iShare protocol or iShare application. Uh, search for Adv Enterprise. I will try to uh, get any uh, part of the text of uh, the uh, image listed in the lab. Then I will hit enter. And as you can see here, I have uh, a lot of options. So I will run it again. I have uh, an image that published in 3 May 2018. I believe this is the image that we are looking for. So I will uh, get this image, exactly this image, and I will select it. And I will type I share call the name of image. After downloading this image and navigating to other devices in this lab to check or uh, find out or figure out what is the images that installed on each image you need to uh, pass through all all devices in this lab in order to know to know what devices are uh, running as you can see here uh, this device is called the kali net slash bc so you can search also for kali net let's see let's see if i have the option to download kali net as well i will search for kali Net. I don't have Kalinet, so I will type the keyword Kali only to see if it's relevant. I have Linux Kali options, so uh, this iOS image uh, or this file image is not existing. So uh, we can use uh, another software or another operating system. So uh, that was all for this lab in this lab or in this long video. It's almost one hour till now. We uh, take a deep dive in Bennett Lab installation and setup, how to get images, how to run your first lab, uh, what is the fix of uh, the problem if the devices that you was trying to start on Bennett Lab was, was starting and then turned it off immediately. We also illustrated how to do the same steps of installation on VMware Workstation. And last but not least, I show you how to get iOS images or software images that will help you in practicing and uh, applying what you are learning on Bennett Lab image. If you like this video, I hope you uh, press the like button, share it with your friends or anybody who, who might be interested with the content of this video. And tell me in the comments what uh, what else you want to know, to know about. And uh, last but not least, if you have anything to ask, don't uh, hesitate and write your question and comment and make sure that I will get back to you and give you an answer if I have. Thank you very much. That was Ahmed Hifni and thank you for viewing and bye bye.